Time here from Niche. Hope you're well. We're going to do something a little bit different. I've got a couple of news pieces that I wanted to run by. A um, couple of them are really interesting. We touch on the Chancellor meeting up with lenders and what they're going to do with mortgage affordability going forward. We touch on some of the online uh, state agency stuff that's happening and what's going on with the market. Uh, we'll look at interest rates as well. So um, just quickly head on, heading into the first piece is the Chancellor's met with a bunch of mortgage lenders, so the big lenders have all met together in a room. So the bank meeting included Nationwide, Virgin, Barclays, Santander, NatWest, Lloyds Banking Group and HSBC. Lloyds Banking Group, so people like Lloyds and obviously Halifax as well. Um, now this is Mortgage Solutions, which is basically a trade publication, but I did, uh, I'm, I'm highlighting this because of what br some of the brokers have actually written underneath this uh, article, rather than the actual article itself. Um, the article basically says that they've all met together and the lenders have agreed that they will allow customers who are up to date with payments to switch to new competitive mortgage deals without any further affordability tests and will provide information to help customers plan ahead for their rate ends. So basically when your mortgage comes up for renewal or your fixed rate mortgage comes up they'll allow you to switch without affordability test. Guess what? That happens already has been done doing so for many, many years. And in fact, every single one of these lenders has got this process in place. It's called a product switch or a product transfer. So basically, let's, let's read what brokers are saying. No change there then. And then you got this guy here. So they had a meeting to decide to do what they already do, product transfer or product switching. Call it what you like, but it's already existed prior to this meeting. <laughs> Someone should have briefed Mr. Hunt before he just swallowed the existing criteria. Basically, these guys are so out of touch, they haven't got a clue. They don't have mortgages. If they have, they're probably offshore mortgages. Uh, they're all millionaires. They don't really know what's going on. So they have to be told. And unfortunately, the people that are telling them probably don't have mortgages. They've probably got so much wealth uh, around them that they don't really understand the concept. So... They go in rooms and they've been told waffle over the stuff, some, some of the stuff that the banks could do. Well, the banks are already doing that, so they've just sold them a dream. Um, now, there is a more serious point where they have obviously tried to put in place uh, some uh, structure for all these people that are going to come off low rates, go on high rates and be dealing with the shock. Now, there are going to be people that are going to default on mortgages. There are people going to be struggling with their finances, the cost of living. So they're looking at initiatives of how they can weather the storm. So whether that's turning a repayment for an interest only, maybe doing an interest only mortgage for a short term period. Interest only mortgages, I'm not a huge fan on, on a residential front because not on, so much on buy to lets, but on residential, it's a wrong way to go. Um, but short term it could help as long as there is a plan to get them back onto repayment obviously someone's got to do something to be able to manage otherwise a lot of people that are just going to default on their mortgages how they default on their mortgages how they can put plans in place how they can get in touch with the lenders and deal with things put payment plans in place how that's going to be affected by their credit report it will all need staffing and processes so a more serious point of this meeting was probably around that but that's really quite a lot of detail and I very much doubt they would be going through the details with Mr. Mr. Hunt I think Mr. Hunt wanted something very very big and he's been sold sold this thing which already exists the real initiative is if you are with Nationwide for example to be able to allow to go to Virgin or Barclays or Santander without further affordability checks. But that goes, that's a huge, huge problem because these guys here, the Financial Conduct Authority, who are the regulators, made it one of their main missions after the last crash to bring in uh, financial responsibility from the lenders as well as the clients, uh, financial literacy, and also being able to, you know, brought in stress testing for people to be able to, and not only for lenders, for, for clients to be able to manage finances. So by best basically doing this, if it's ever going to come in place where you're with Nationwide and you can go to Virgin without running any affordability checks, as long as you're not going to change the mortgage terms, then you're essentially passing on liability from one entity to another entity to another entity. 
um, and nothing can be done. So it's complete uh, a minefield there. Um, looking at other, a couple of other um, bits of news here, you got Yahoo Finance who are talking about another interest rate rise. Well, there's no secret that there is going to be an interest rate rise. It's going to happen. But don't worry, just because interest rates will rise, it doesn't mean mortgage rates will rise. Remember, uh, last year, uh, last month, only a month and a half ago, interest rates were lower, but mortgage rates were over 6% with some of the lenders. Um, now, thankfully, we've actually seen rates come down quite a bit, actually. When you're looking at the five-year market, especially, um, that rate has come down. Uh, considerably. Um, uh, I've been quote, I mean, I was quoting people at 5.5% rates, and I'm now quoting people at 4.5%, 4.6%, 4.7%. So it's come down quite a bit only in the last couple of weeks. So uh, watch this space. Haven't seen too much movement on the two year market. My final piece that I want to touch on is this piece here about purple bricks and in general online businesses, right? So in for FD Advisor here, they're talking about purple bricks. Um, reporting a 42 million pound loss. So, Purple Bricks are one of the, well, I think they are our largest uh, online estate agency and certainly probably the largest single estate agency out there now. Um, and they've made a loss of 42 million. And uh, pardon my French, and that's before the shit hits the fans with the property market. So, that was, you know, until April the 30th. So, what the hell they're going to do this year? So, um, obviously, the market is, is going is, is to be more subdued. Uh, they, there's not going to be enough activity, so they're looking for money. One of the things they are saying they're doing is they're making quite a lot of money out of their conveyancing service, which is their solicitor's referral and conveyancing. But also, they're launching their mortgage broker. So they're thinking, well, let's do it all in-house, and they're going to launch their own mortgage brokerage and try to um, drum up some business there. This brings me to a bigger point around uh, online businesses and... Uh, over the last few years, we've seen a number of businesses go and, you know, uh, launch and, and go and approach money markets and say, you know, they're going to go online and they're going to streamline it and they're not going to charge for this and it's going to be free for this and it's going to be flat fee for this and they're going to be this. And what you've found is all of them have gone out of business. The reason for that is, although you might have an online piece, a good technology piece, what they found out very quickly um, by spanking all their money is... Mortgages are, uh, and certainly even a state agency business, is a very personal and people's person. So there's no point having a bank of 300 people if they're out of college and they have never got a mortgage before. And uh, people want that expertise. So once these people have gone through the journeys of dealing with these uh, uh, cheap and cheerful sort of setups, what you've found is um, that customer journey, the customer uh, wants a little bit more. So the customer wants an estate agent who is locally based, who understands the market, who understands what, what properties have sold for, not someone remotely so, sitting somewhere else. Um, uh, and clients, what I believe, ultimately want knowledge and want to be able to speak to somebody. A lot of the business that we actually get is second hand, where people have gone uh, have been referred by their estate agency to a free mortgage broker, for example, or an online mortgage broker, and they found out after weeks and weeks of back and forth documentation that they essentially didn't know what they were talking about. But um, let me know what you think, guys. Obviously, everything is subjective, and I've got a, uh, I'm, I'm highly impartial because I do run a brokerage, which is a hybrid, it is online as well as um, uh, face, uh, face to face. But, you know, I've got a dog in the game, so I'm, I'm hardly an unbiased person. But that's my view, and that's my views on the market and what's going on right now. Let me know your views, and obviously subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. All the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.